This is the one artifact that will change everything we know about ancient history. It's also known as the Baghdad Battery, and it still works to this day. All right. So let me take you back to the year 1936. In the country of Iraq, right outside the capital city of Baghdad, a farmer was digging in the dirt. He didn't realize it at the time, but he was about to make one of the most important discoveries in human history. As he dug, his shovel hit something hard like a rock. So he picked it up and brushed some of the dirt off to reveal a strange looking clay jar. He had no idea just how old it was, but we now know it was over 2000 years old. He took the jar home with him, placed it next to his other tools, and basically forgot about it. But six months later, an archeologist named Wilhelm King came to his village. When he heard about the strange jar, he went to the man's house, bought it from him for $40, then shipped it off to the National Museum in Baghdad. Nobody really gave it much thought after that. Fast forward a few years to 1957 when another archaeologist finally got around to studying the jar. He cleaned it up, revealing what you can see here. A clay jar with a copper cylinder on top and an iron rod going into the mouth of the jar. We now know that this was created during the Parthian Empire. Between 250 BCE and 224 CE, that makes it over 2,000 years old. Oh. But archaeologists still didn't know exactly what it was. They were stumped for decades until scientists ran tests and realized what it actually is. And it's mind-blowing. This jar is an actual battery that produces electricity. If you think about batteries today, you probably use double A's, triple A's, maybe even D cells. Well, it turns out those are actually pretty new inventions. For the 1900s, most batteries were made from jars, and this is essentially the same design, except instead of having acid inside, there's water. Researchers are unsure exactly how it works, since the liquid inside has evaporated over the last two millennia. But they do know that the clay jar is the negative terminal, the iron rod is the positive terminal, and the copper cylinder somehow acted as a catalyst. Together, they form a primitive electric cell. And here's where things get crazy. Researchers believe that if you put vinegar in the jar, it would work like a modern battery. I mean, that's exactly what a battery is, an electrochemical cell. And this literally fits the description of one. So how strong is this battery? How much juice does it produce? Unfortunately, not much. It's only capable of producing one volt of electricity. Today, most batteries produce at least 1.5 volts, and your smartphone needs about 3.6 volts. So you couldn't charge your phone with this battery, but you could potentially power small devices. Think about how awesome that is. You can pick up a battery that's over 2,000 years old, pour vinegar in the jar, and instantly have electricity. It's not only that, but it's possible that these were used even earlier. Archaeologists have found similar artifacts in the Middle East that date back to as far as 500 BCE, and we don't know for sure what they were. But it's likely that they are more primitive batteries. If so, that means that ancient people in the region were way more advanced than we think. It's believed that each of these batteries produced about one volt of electricity. And if you combined them in series, you could create a much larger battery with many more volts. Scientists believe it would take nine of these batteries hooked up in a row to power a modern light bulb. That might not seem like much, but considering these are handmade batteries from 2000 years ago, it's actually pretty impressive. For some context, the first recorded invention of a battery wasn't until 200 years ago. In 1800, Alessandro Volta created the first battery by stacking disks of zinc and copper. This was huge because it gave us the ability to study electricity, which led to even more inventions. But these ancient batteries were created hundreds of years before Volta S invention. And they might have been used for all sorts of technology. This brings us back to the original question. Why were these batteries created in the first place? For decades, archaeologists were baffled. Why would ancient people go through the effort to create batteries? It's complicated, time-consuming, and they didn't really have any advanced tools. But researchers believe they might have used them for electroplating. Have you ever seen a Roman coin? Most of them look worn down and scratched up because they've been passed around for thousands of years. But every once in a while, you'll find one that looks almost brand new. That's because some Roman emperors plated their coins with silver or gold. This made them look shinier and fancier, which helped boost their public image. Well, the same technique can be done with other metals. By attaching a positive and negative terminal to a metal object, you can transfer electrons and coat the object with another metal. 
Scientists believe this is what these batteries were used for, electroplating objects with precious metals like gold and silver. But there is one major problem with this theory. Electroplating requires alternating current. The Baghdad battery can only produce direct current, so it's unlikely that they would use it for that purpose. Instead, they might have used it for something else entirely. We don't know for sure what the purpose was, but researcher Irving Stone has a unique theory. He believes that the batteries were used with acupuncture. According to him, ancient Chinese medical texts describe a type of acupuncture where two people were needed, one to apply a small electric shock and the other to receive treatment. Could this be true? Well, we don't have any evidence, but it's certainly a possibility. Maybe they had other uses for electricity that we haven't discovered yet. Some experts have even suggested that ancient people use them for their light. Picture a room full of these batteries wired together with candles on top. It, it could act as a primitive light fixture that flickers on and off. While it would be dimmer than a modern light bulb, it would be much brighter than a candle flame. The possibilities are really endless. All we know for sure is that none of these batteries have been found near homes or villages. They've only been found in areas that used to be trade hubs, and they were always found alone. Maybe ancient people used them in pairs. To form a circuit, you need both a positive and negative terminal. So maybe they had one battery that produced positive electricity and another that produced negative electricity. Then when you combine them, you would get an electric current. I know it sounds far-fetched, but the Baghdad battery shows us that ancient people understood way more about electricity than we give them credit for. And just to make things even crazier, these aren't the only ancient batteries that have been found. Throughout the years, similar jars have been found in Turkey, Iran, Israel, and China. There's even one in an Egyptian tomb that dates back to 200 BCE. Each of these is slightly different. But they all seem to follow the same principle. The reason why they look so different is because each culture had its own style. The Parthians preferred tall, narrow jars, while the Chinese preferred wide, shallow ones. But no matter what their shape or size was, they all functioned the same way. It seems like many ancient cultures independently invented batteries without knowing that other cultures were doing the same thing. Just imagine how much knowledge was being developed throughout the world at this time. Ancient Greece was inventing mathematics, Chinese were creating the first mechanical calculators, and India was developing the concept of zero. It was truly a special time in history. And who knows, maybe we'll eventually discover that these batteries were used for advanced technology that we've never seen. There are so many mysteries surrounding these artifacts, but hopefully one day we'll uncover the truth. What do you think? What were these ancient batteries used for? Let me know your thoughts. Now before you go, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos about amazing archaeological finds. Thanks for watching. See you next time.